and um, people are preparing for Christmas. By next week, I think the church will thin out completely. And those of us that are in town, we Christmas with ourselves. Praise the Lord. Amen. So quickly, we share the word of God. Destiny influences. What's the definition of destiny? Before we can understand what we influence it. And I checked the dictionary. And it says. That to which any person. Or anything is destined. A predetermined state. And this one began to look like Bible. A condition predestined by the divine or by human will. Praise God. Thank you, sir. A condition predestined by the divine or human will. So from this definition, we see that we have capacity to influence our destiny. Amen. From where Brian and I were sharing this morning in Sunday school, we were talking about voices. And God told the children of Israel, take, um, told Moses, take 12 spies. Let them go and spy the land. And bring reports. And they brought fruits. And out of the 12, 10 said, they can't make it. Two said, we can make it. Hallelujah. You see that 10 have chosen. 2 have chosen. So if you say you can't make it, you won't make it. If you say you can make it, you will make it. Do you know why? As you have spoken to his ears, so will God perform. So if you repeatedly say that you will not make it, The heavens are hearing you. The elements, they are, hearing, they are hearing you. They will help you not to make it. But if you say, irrespective of everything around, I will not die in it. I will make it. You will make it. Because the elements will support you to make it. The heavens will support you to make it. Men will support you to make it. Do you know why men will support you? Because you carry this good energy. There is an energy that oozes out of somebody that is optimistic. There is a joy that is seen on the face of somebody that is optimistic. Irrespective of the challenges. And there is a sadness that is seen over somebody that is pessimistic that sucks energy from other people people run away from such people so we see that in our journey to destiny or to destination you have a part to play you have a role to play into becoming who you want to be or to achieving what purpose you want to achieve. Praise the Lord. The definition continues. And it says. That which is inevitable. In the fullness of time. I see this definition. Like God's definition. It's inevitable. Like God's counsel. It's inevitable. 
If you take God's counsel, take his word, for his word, it will stand. It says, the fixed order of things, invisible necessity, and irresistible power, or agency conceived of as determining the future, whether in general or of an individual. This is powerful definition. In general, do you know that death is common to all? Death is common to all. It's our destiny. Hallelujah. So this is general. But there are individual things that are peculiar. That are still determined by the invisible power. So this morning... We are going to look at things that, we in, that will influence or may want to influence the outcome of God's plan or the outcome of our intent and desire. And um, I said today, I want to share with us a memory verse that everybody must never forget. So we are going to do a memory verse, a memory verse today. Hallelujah. So can we put Jeremiah 10.23 on the screen? Nobody should forget this. Two memory verses. I think the first memory verse we should never forget is John 3.16. At least for God to love the world. That he gave the only begotten son. Then we should add this one to it. Praise God. He said, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not way. So where's the way of man? Hallelujah. And he finished it by saying, it is not in man. It is not in man. Oh, man, I love this. Never forget it. Never forget it. Never. If you forget anything about your life, this one, don't forget it. I know the way of man is not where in himself. It is not in man that walks a eh, to direct his steps. This is powerful. So for those of us that say, my, 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 my God, the word of God saying is not yours. Even though it's yours, it's your step. But it's not your step. Your life. If you understand your life, that the cost of your life, you don't have the capacity to channel it, to direct it. So this is saying to us, that we should seek something higher. Hallelujah. We should seek God. I love the way the New English Translation puts it. The New English puts it. Do you have New English? If you have New English, put it like this. It puts it like this. Lord will know that people do not control their own destiny. Do you have New English? You don't have. Okay. So I'll read it out. Lord, we'll know. We know, rather, that people do not control their own destiny. It is not in their power to determine what will happen to them. That's clear enough for us to understand. You can't control your destiny. It is not in your power to direct your destiny. To say this is how your destiny should go. No, it is not in your power. Even when we had these two definitions, the word of God is still saying people can't control their destiny. People can't. Hallelujah. And it is not in our power To determine what will happen to us.
We need God. From this memory verse, we need God. See, people are smart. You can go to school and come with a first class. Praise God for your life. You came out with first class. You got a job with a blue chip company or oil company. They are paying you salary in millions. Thank God for your life. And um, you so much believe in your strength. In your capacity. But I tell you. Someday. Somewhere. Somehow. You will need God. Did you hear me? Someday. Somewhere. Somehow. You will need God. Your intelligence will not be able to help you that day. The people you know, the club you belong to, your IQ, 5.0 or 10.0, will fail you. And you look at other people like, can't you do something with your life? Then you speak grammar. Hallelujah. Like those that things are not working out together for, they don't have brain. At your age, you can't think. What are you doing with your life? What have you done with your life? Come, 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 come talk to me. Maybe I can help you. It is not in man. Hallelujah. It is not in man. So if you don't recognize that God is the one that gave you that capacity, Someday, somewhere, somehow, you will need God. Amen. So, in dealing with one another, let's be cautious. Hallelujah. I say it. It's good to testify, but at times when we testify, we testify with insensitivity. It's good to testify. Do you understand? Uh, praise the Lord. My husband normally gives me 300,000 for feeding. So he now came. He said, manage this 250. I was angry. Somebody. The husband gives her 20,000. And she's asking. So if he gives you 250 for food, what do you guys use to buy other things? Do you understand what I'm saying? Insensitivity in the house of God. Let's be cautious how we deal with ourselves. Because who you are, what you are, is not in you. To come to boast. Hallelujah. You have been given. It's not in man. It's not in us man. To control. Our own destiny. So three levels. Of destination or destiny. That we. That we should know. Of two. We, we might not, um, if we miss number one and two, it's okay. Is that okay? But number three, never miss it. Number one, everybody has desire. Hmm? Everybody has desire. I want to become. There's nothing wrong in wanting to become. There's nothing at all. But, as you want to become, don't bring other people down. Hallelujah. You know, it happens in the offices. 
where competitions are tight, you know, you talk bad about somebody so that you can paint yourself good, so that they can see that you are the one working or you are the one good. So when it's time for promotion, they will promote you and will look at other people as if they are not good. Please don't, don't, don't put people down. Don't. Don't slander people. Don't backstab people. Because you want to become. No, no, no. There's no need, man. The, the sky is wide enough for all birds to fly without their wings. Touch it. You are not the one that will determine my life. So there's no need. If God says I will not get there, man, there's nothing I will do about it. So don't backbite me. Don't badmouth me. Don't slander me. There's no need. Psalm 107, from 27 to 31. Even in becoming who you want to become, you see, there are challenges. They were challenged on the sea. They were tossed up. They were tossed down. Their hearts were in their mouths, you know. And God helped them. Till they came to their desired heaven. So, in your desire that you want to become somebody... You will still need God's help. That's what he's saying. And he finishes it. Oh, that man who praised the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, to the children of men. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. So in your wanting to become, wanting to get to your desired heaven, you will still need God's help. You still need God's help. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, and they called on God. And he helped them. That's the first destination. Your own. The second one. If God has promised you, or people have promised you, it's a destination. If God says you will be the head, head is a place. Hallelujah. And tail is a place. Head is top. Tail is bottom. You know, at the top is, you might say it's quiet there. Yeah? I would say it is serene. Serene. Like, you can't compare Banana Island with um, Okokomaiko. Hallelujah. Okokomaiko, you can't compare Banana Island with um, Victoria Island. Despite the fact both of them are island. One island's level is higher than the other. So if he says we're at the top, it's a promise. It's a destination. Hallelujah. And you need to understand it. That that is my place in Christ Jesus. Because he said so. Bottom. is crowded. Too much noise. You, ah, you step on my leg. You to move your leg. You see, that's what you'll be hearing at the bottom. There's no space. But at the top. One person is occupying like 500 square meters. Just to build four bedroom flats. Put some in pool. You understand? Hallelujah. The second one of the position. Solomon's position was a throne. And Adonijah so wanted it. So if we don't get this first two, it's okay. But the third one, don't miss it. This destination is called glory. Second Corinthians 17. Uh, did I say Second Corinthians? No. Uh, um, Second Corinthians um, 3, 17. 
Now, the Lord, okay, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. Are what? Changed. One day will be changed. If you get to number one heaven. Or you don't get to number one heaven. If you make your target. If you don't meet your target. If you become or you did not become. Please don't miss this one. Hallelujah. I used to see some skits. And the guy said, see the person that wanted to be a doctor. But do you know what the guy is doing? Maybe he's selling shy. <laughs> but wanting to be a doctor was his desire. He didn't meet it. But he's doing something else. But this one, don't miss it. Hallelujah. Don't miss it, oh. He said... We will be changed. We will be what? Changed into what? The same image. Hallelujah. After that, that image is a glorious image. There is another there is no other image after that but glory again. After that, he said, so we'll be changed from glory to glory. From glory to glory. There is nothing higher than the glory of the image of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that state is eternal. Amen. Is what? Is eternal. Okay. So. That is our destination ultimately. To be like Christ. To be like Christ. Romans 8, 24. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. Because who hopes for what he sees? But we hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait for it with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit of the Lord helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know how we should pray. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes on behalf of the saints according to God's will. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Who are called according to his purpose. Because those whom he foreknew. He also predestined to be what? Conformed. To be conformed to the image of his son. That his son will be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also did what? That's the end. Glory is the end of the matter. Glory is the, After that, there is nothing again. There is, there is no syllabus that is above the image of Jesus. There is none. 
There's nothing that we want to become after that we have attained the nature and the stature of Jesus in glory. There's nothing again. I have a friend. He has um, how many degrees now? He has a degree in country survey. He has a degree in civil engineering. He has a degree, so many degrees. He just finished law. And he has first class. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, if you want to go to school, there, there's so many things to become. There's so many degrees to acquire. You will never finish acquiring degree till you die. Do you understand what I'm saying? You want to do this business, you will start it. You want to do another business, you will start it. You will do another, but when it comes to glory, eh? when we are transformed into that image, when we are glorified, there's no glory after that glory again. Hmm? You've got it. Nothing. That's the ultimate. To become like Jesus. That's the ultimate. So we we'll look at some factors that will want to hinder us from becoming like Jesus. I call them like I said influencers, I call them distractors. Number one, location or the land. See, if you check, if you Google it, Nigeria is the number one stressed out country in the world. Do not call stress. Stress. I mean, a country itself is stressful. When, when we get home, Google it. The number one stressed out country in the world. Nigeria is stressful. The land is stressful. To move your car is stressful. You go and queue for three hours. It's stressful. Is that not stress? You have your car. To buy petrol in your car. In the sun, your brain is hot. If we had cheap, you know, there's some equipments that are temperature dependent. When the temperature is high, they begin to beep. Our brains are beeping, we know here. Our brains are beeping. Because of high temperature, our gasket don't they burn. Nigeria is stressful. You run to make money and you get the money and the money is not enough. You go back again to make up because the fund yesterday was 5,000. You hustle, hustle, you got 5K. You wanted to buy the fund. Ah, my brother, as you come, as you left that day, the new price enter. It can become 5.5. Five. In fact, the container that is coming is like 6K we go sell. It's stressful. See, you can't walk where when your brain is hot. Hallelujah. If you are looking for people that are misbehaving, eh? Nigerians are number one. You go outside the country because the environment is not stressful. Hmm? Because the environment is not stressful. Everything is working well. You encounter Nigeria stress as you enter from immigration. Because you understand. Say, what you bring come for us? Is it because of you I went out? Stress! Then they will say you feel one form. Oh, Lord, help us. The land is stressful. And this is what I'm trying to say. There is no way you will behave well when the land is not supportive. Second Kings chapter 6, 24 to 31. One day, Ben Haddad was working. And two women. And one woman cried to Ben Haddad and told him, Help me, help me, help me. Sir. Why should I help you? Food has run out. There's no food in town. There's nothing in town. 
And the woman said, Ah, we know that there's no food in town. But me and this woman, we agree to boil our children and eat. Is that normal? When, when, when the land is stressful, the people will behave abnormally. Are you with me? The people can behave well. The people can behave well. And unfortunately, our leaders don't have compassion. When Ben Haddad had it, he tore his clothes. Our leaders don't tear their clothes. In fact, they buy new clothes. They buy new clothes. In scarcity, they buy more cars. They part the, they part the budget. Ben Haddad tore his clothes. And he was looking for solution. Our leaders are not looking for solution. If they are looking for solution, we won't be, we won't be here today. My, my Dara was telling me that they are going to, that they, they said, was it Dara or Ibuku? That they are sending a memo that a plate of Indomie will be 750 naira. I said, are you joking? Next semester, a plate of Indomie and one egg, 750 naira. And I said, so what if you want to eat gari, gari with vegetable? <laughs> Say nine hundred, nine fifty. Stress. You understand what I'm saying? So I mean, I'm now I'm 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 going to another level of stress because I have to increase the allowance. Is that not stressful? Stress. So if a parent doesn't have enough to support a girl child, that's in school. That child will want to survive. The child will misbehave. The land is stressful. It's a destiny influencer. The land is a destiny influencer. Are we together? It's a destiny influencer. The latest theme now is Jackpaism. Are we not hearing Jackpaism? Why? People are running away from stress. At least you will know somebody with on Jaguar. Don't you know anybody with on Jaguar? Then plenty. My sister, you know somebody with on Jaguar? Everybody knows one person or the other that has Jaguar. At least in this church, we know people that have Jaguar. Why? It's stress. 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 Egg from 650. We are buying it 2.2 now. In our lifetime. So the land has the capacity to affect our destiny. You know the parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8. Hmm? From verse 5. Same seed. Same seed, different environment. Same seed. A farmer went out to plant a seed. As he scattered it across his field, some fell on the footpath where it was stepped on and the birds ate it. Next verse. Next verse. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died of lack of moisture. Next verse. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up with it and we're choked. Last verse. Still, other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times. That is what these people are looking for. Environment where they can thrive. Hallelujah. Environment, location where they can thrive. That's what they are looking for. Every child of God has a capacity of productivity in him or her. But the environment you find yourself goes a long way 
to determining how your prosperity can be in life. That's number one. Number two, even our own call to obedience. The land can be good. God can be with us. But we can decide to obey or not. Exodus 23, 32, he said, But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all. You see that? It's not enough to obey. We should also do what? Do. He said, Then I will be an enemy unto your enemies, an adversary unto your adversary. Deuteronomy 27 10. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. Deuteronomy 38. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do, you see, as you are obeying, you are what? You are doing. They go together. As you are obeying, we are doing. But when we don't obey, and when we don't do, there are consequences. You know, when God told Saul to go and execute all the Amalekite king, kill everything, he did not. He did not. He did not. He did not. And Saul told him to obey. It's better than what? I see, brethren, we will, we will pray less if we just obey. We will pray less. We will fast less if we just obey and do the right things. We will pray less. We will fast less. I tell you the truth. Our prayer will be prayer of mostly thanksgiving. Or we'll just come say the Lord's Prayer. We won't spend like two hours in prayer. Do you understand what I'm saying? To obey is better. To obey is better than the sacrifices of prayer, marathon prayer. Than the sacrifices of seed offering. Than the sacrifices of seven day non-stop kinikon. To obey is better than these sacrifices. So people are looking for environment where they will pray less. They just obey the system that is working. Hallelujah. So you even see Christians, we are not behaving well. There's an alarm in our brain because the brain is hot. Peep, 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 peep. We know they hear. Hallelujah. Next one. We are talking about destiny. God has written some things concerning some of us. And when we understand the handwriting of God in our lives, we talk about the word of God this morning, how to hear God. I say, Jesus is the one speaking. And what Jesus spoke is written. Hallelujah. So if you want to know your destiny, go and read the word of God. Your destiny is already written. Amen. And Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. Hebrews 10, 7 said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do. To do. Not my will. But whose will? Thy will. To do thy will, O God. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. It's, it's a sad story. <sighs> I mean, and I, I took Demas. Brethren, your salvation is in your hands. Hallelujah. I will not work it out for you. Because me, I'm working out my own. 
So I will, I will encourage us, anywhere we find ourselves in the body of Christ, please be planted. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? Be what? Be planted. Be planted. You know, because one of the things that is making people to jump, I'm looking for quick, was it? She was the one talking about um, people looking for fast answer. Oh, somebody, okay, yeah. It's because it's, the, the, the land is not working. And people can't work out their salvation. So they are looking for where it can easily be worked out. I mean, come on, man. It's on us. See, I tell you the truth. It's on you. It's on you. Your salvation is on you. Your prosperity is on you. If you like, you shortcut. You see, it's just on you. It's just on you. It's just on you. And Demas came to me as a very sad story. And I want us to see the, the retrogression of Demas. And that will not be our own story in Jesus' name. That is the choice to do what is written concerning us. I mean, God wants all of us to recognize Jesus and to be a part of the body of Christ and to be planted and rooted in him and not be blown away by whatever situation or circumstance. Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. Look at what Paul wrote to the Colossians. He said, look, the beloved doctor, and who? Demas greet you. These were brothers in Christ, and they were together. Do you understand? Philemon 124. He said, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. Philemon 1, 24. You know, the first one was a letter to Colossians. The second one was a letter to an individual. Hallelujah. So, Philemon knows Demas. Colossians know Demas. People know Demas as a brother. They know Demas as a fellow Christian. And Paul was writing letters to these people. And Demas was sending greetings. Ah, Paul, what are you doing? I'm writing a letter to Colossians. Please let me greet them. Hallelujah. Help me do what? Help me greet them. I didn't say Philemon 1 4. I said 24. Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, fellow what? Laborers. 2 Timothy 4 10. For Demas has forsaken me. Ah, God will help us in Jesus' name. His destiny has been influenced. Look at what happened. Demas has deserted me because he loves the things of this life. Do you know what? He didn't understand the glory. That number three we are talking about. The glory of this life. The glory of this world. How come that a child of God will suddenly prefer the glory of this world that Satan offered Jesus. You remember? Satan offered Jesus. I hope that is not our pursuit. I hope that is not our desire. That we are targeting the glory of this world. So that when we get there and we don't hammer. Somebody was talking to me yesterday about somebody that we know. And hey, God will help us in Jesus. And I was afraid. And God was telling me, he said, do you know how wealthy this guy is? I said, I don't know. Ah, he said, every time this guy does this thing like this, I said, the word's like 
10 million. Now, the guy that is talking to me about this Christian brother is looking at him with the eyes of the glory of this world. Do you understand what I'm saying? With the standard of this world. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope that is not how they are rating us. If, if the world system begins to think that yes, you are measuring up to our standard, we are done for. Are we together? That we are measuring up to the standard of the world. We are finished. And that was what happened to Demas. Maybe he was not seeing, he was not seeing it with Paul. He was not seeing the glory anymore. He doesn't understand it anymore. He doesn't know that there is a glory that is endless. Because the glory of the world will be burned up. This world and the glory will all be disappear, we will be consumed by fire. I hope you, I just pray that this will not be our story. This won't be our testimony in Jesus' name. That we have walked, we have become laborers in the vineyard of God. We have cast out demons, we have prayed, we have done everything, and we now flip over. And what we want to begin to pursue is the glory of the world. I'd rather die like Lazarus. Because Lazarus entered glory. Hallelujah. Lazarus did what? He entered glory. A glory that is unending. A glory that never dies. A glory that never fades. And this guy was rating this Christian brother for me. Based on the world standard. And he was accept they've accepted him. The Lord will help us in Jesus name. What is your desire? What is your target? Why do you want to become what you want to become? So that this man too can talk about you. That you don't hammer. Brethren. We need to begin to ask ourselves. Questions. The glory that Jesus rejected. Demas took it. You must took it. There are things out there that we are not careful. We will lose our faith. Hallelujah. There are things out there. There are styles out there. There are ways of life out there that if we are not careful, hallelujah, will lose it. Demas lost it. I hope today that the rating and what people have been, what people are saying of you, I hope it's not according to the world standard. I just hope. There are so many things out there, lost of the eyes, what we hear that can influence our destiny. Our destiny is glorious. Our destiny is eternal. Our destiny is to become like Jesus. Let us pray. I want us to, to begin to search ourselves. Why do you want to become who you want to be? Why? Ah, why? 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 Your soul, your soul, your soul, your soul, your soul. 
There's no amount that can be paid for your soul. No amount. No amount. One day, all of us will appear before the throne of God. And we are going to tell all that we have done. We're going to give account of our lives. And whatever we have become will no longer matter. Hey, I'm a professor, will no longer matter. <laughs> I'm the richest man on earth, will no matter. Will no matter. The syllabus will be the conformity to the image of Jesus in glory. I'm married, will no matter. I have children, will no matter. I have 10 houses, we don't even count at all. They won't count. Dangote is my own. No, 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 it will not count. Hallelujah. It will count. It will count. I have 10 degrees, we will not count. They won't count. They won't count. They won't count. They won't count. What we count on the last day is are you conformed to the image of his glory? That's what we count. So this morning as we have understood it that it is not in man to control his destiny. If God does not help us, no one can. Can you just pray this morning and ask for help? And say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I don't want to lose my soul. I don't want to lose eternal life. And I don't want to be like Demas. That has been a Christian. A fellow laborer. But his destiny was truncated by the love of the world. When the word of God says, love not the world and all that is in it. They must choose to love the world. Father, help us, Lord. In the stress of this nation, help us not to misbehave, Lord. Help us to be steadfast. Help us, O oh God, so that we can conform to the image of your dear Son. So that when we are changed, oh God, we'll be like him. Living eternally from glory to glory. Father, this regime will no longer count. Because eternity is now the hallmark. Help us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.